We are here, delicious tuning, with a, a Sprintec supercharger on a GR86. <laughs> This is done by 86 speed. They actually showed this at SEMA. And we're just gonna kind of go over everything we've been doing. We're just doing the tuning part in the ECU with Ecutech. Come over here, you can see obviously the supercharger itself. Give me one second, I'm gonna show you one thing really quick. As you can see, this is the pulley we have on here right now. This is the pulley on the previous Gen 86. So I believe this was a 75 millimeter pulley. And then we used to sell this one, which is a 69 millimeter pulley, which brought it up to about 12 pounds of boost. So I'm sure you can imagine that's probably making more boost than uh, the previous gen, which it is. It's making about 15 pounds of boost at Redline now. Um, so that's a pretty good increase. And if you look over here, you can see we have our Gen 2 flex fuel kit. And it's a CAN based system. So it actually connects into the CAN vehicle network or I guess what they call CAN network, it is a network. <laughs> As you can see, back to the Sprintex here, we have a development Sprintex supercharger here. If you look at the intake, it's still a like fiber composite, you can see that. So we are still waiting on the official plastic, um, kind of like this one here, like this pipe, it's plastic. Uh, we're still waiting on the official piece to show up so we can actually finalize the tuning on that. So that's why we're not releasing some of the numbers right now because uh, we still want to make sure everything is going to work well. And some of the little issues we had with tuning the Sprintex is the Sprintex is a very responsive supercharger. It's pretty much the most responsive supercharger on the market. It may not make the most power, but it feels more like you added two more cylinders to your car. So it has this instant response, instant torque. And with that, you have to work on tip and knock because you have a high compression engine. You know, you have 12 and a half to one compression. You're running on 91 octane fuel. You still have the full stock exhaust system, all catalytic converters are installed. Um, so you are, you have a lot of back pressure going on and in order to get rid of some of that uh, tip and knock we're having, we had to go and develop a custom tables within Ecutech. Because the Ecutech right now is still in a beta form and that beta form is not allowing us to do all the things we usually could kind of in, in the last gen, um, gen one BRZ. There's a couple more tables in there we could do a bit more with. So. We were able to, after about two days of development, get something so we can get rid of that tip and knock completely now. So it has no issue in between shifts, drives normal, feels great, has the power. That's a good step. That was that was a big issue. Also, we were saying that Ecutech's in beta right now. We come over here, we can actually see that there's a, we had one other problem with uh, the software. And we don't know if it's Ecutech or if it might actually just be the stock ECU. So when the car goes into boost and it goes above the map sensor value, so on the stock map sensor, it reads to about four, four and a half pounds of boost. The supercharger goes to about 15 pounds of boost. So you can imagine we're hitting well above five pounds of boost pretty quickly. Um, with that, what happens is the check engine light will actually come on under boost. It does not throw code. It just, the check engine light comes on, stays active as long as it's above that four and a half pounds of boost. And once you let off, it goes away. If we go in there and you actually check the history of the check engine light, there is no check engine light, there is nothing. It's just something that it just does. So we tried putting in a bigger map sensor, obviously, and what we found was the supercharger doesn't like that. So these superchargers, because of their design and because the placement of the map sensor is actually on the runners or right near the runners, it gets a lot of vibration or airflow vibration and pressure changes that are very drastic. And the supercharger itself also causes um, some uh, pressure changes. So now you have the valves opening and closing, which is causing a pressure change. You have the supercharger itself causing pressure change on the other side. So you have this verberation basically going on between the map sensor. So it gets this really bad harmonic and you'll see the boost jump literally five pounds of boost within milliseconds. Um, so when you have the small map sensor, it never shows that because you've already gone above it and it just maxes out and it's a flat line. The problem with that is when you have that fluctuation of that massive amount on the map sensor, fuel injectors are also following that. 
So all of a sudden the fuel injectors will start going up and down, up and down. And then we're running this thing in closed loop fueling all the time. So now you can imagine the O2 sensor is reading this fluctuation. The ECU is trying to compensate by overcorrecting. So now it's overcorrecting, which then is overcorrecting even more than it should because it can't catch up because the O2 sensor is reading the combustion after it's already exited out the exhaust system. So that's also milliseconds after the combustion's happened. The next combustion's already going on and it's trying to correct the previous one. It doesn't work. It ends up causing all kinds of problems and you end up losing about 20 to 30 horsepower in the car. So what we did was we just put the stock map sensor back on and in order to get rid of that check engine light, which Ecutech might get rid of in the future, we put a little spacer in. And that's the spacer you can see right here. This is just a 3D printed one. We are working on a metal version of it coming soon. It shows only vacuum and it does not show any boost at all. So it actually is reading the vacuum reading all the way from the throttle body. It does not show boost. We do that because then you don't have that check engine light come on, gets rid of it. And we still make the power we need to do because it's reading all the power through this sensor right here, the MAF sensor. And the MAF sensor is what does all the work on this kit. The MAP sensor itself is really only reading atmospheric pressure on startup and while you're driving. Cruising around in idle, it does use a MAP sensor a little bit, but under wide open throttle, it's not really being used. So we just figured we'd take that part out of the system. We don't have this issue anymore. We're making the power we need to do and the car drives fine. A couple things we wanna go over. So the Sprintex supercharger itself is not gonna be the most powerful kit on the market. Um, there are other kits that will come out. There'll be more, turbo kits will be more efficient to make more. Um, but the one thing that Sprintex has that pretty much no other kit does is just the response. The response and the, the super low end torque. Um, think of like just putting another two cylinders in the car and making a six cylinder out of it. That's literally what it feels like. It's instant, it's responsive. Um, it will make great power on flex fuel. It's gonna make even better power. For a daily driver, a fun weekend car, it's a great setup. It, really can't do much better than it. Um, everything else is gonna make more power. If you want it, you can have it, but I mean, it's just, it's a great kit. Um, on to a couple things. Um, one nice thing of not making a whole lot of power is it will be a little bit more reliable that way because you're not really straining the engine as much. Um, I know that's a big issue with these cars. People are really concerned about them. Um, obviously you paid a lot of money for this car. So we do wanna like make sure that it is reliable. So one of the things we do inside the tune is we do have closed loop fueling uh, full time. So that is something that we have been really made sure that we wanna do. What that means is we target an air fuel ratio for idle, for cruise, for partial throttle, and for wide open throttle. And we always make sure that those air fuel ratios are being targeted and then actually being hit by the, air, by the sensor and the ECU is correcting to make sure it's always hitting those values. Uh, the benefit of that is if it goes too lean, it's gonna correct it and make it richer. If it's too rich, it's gonna lean it out. So it's not gonna feel like it's lethargic and slow. Um, we have found on these cars that as you get up and boost, they do tend to have an issue of running too rich. And you end up having to play with all kinds of different things with the port injectors, direct injectors, and the ratio between them and how they are flowing. Um, so that is something we do work on a lot, um, something we've been working on a lot with this car. Um, and it's really made the car feel very consistent, very repeatable, the power is consistent all the time. Um, you know, we can do dyno pull after dyno pull after dyno pull and it keeps being consistent. Um, and one other thing we're gonna do is just talk about the flex fuel kit we have here. We have had this out for a little while. Um, we do have, it's our can kit. We've updated the lines now. So they do have a rubber coating on them to protect the lines even more, even though they are a nylon line inside. Um, and we actually have, this is our, actually our own flex fuel sensor now. Uh, we used to buy the Continental ones, but we've actually decided just to get our own made because it was getting harder and harder and harder to get them. And so that was becoming a concern for us. Uh, the module itself, we are actually working on a new module that'll be coming out actually probably within the next month or two. Um, so be on the lookout for that. Um, it's gonna have a lot of other features we're gonna be able to add into that also. I'm not gonna really talk about that much right now. Um, beyond that, we're not, we're finishing up the tune right now. So we kind of have the drivability done. We have everything kind of working the way we want, but we're waiting on a couple small parts from Sprintex right now to really 
solidify the tune, make it solid, make it good so that it's ready to go. 86 speed will be selling them. Um, we'll have a tune ready to go for them. And I think that's about it for right now.